Hello and welcome back to the channel. Quick announcement before we start, all of the code you see in this video will be available on GitHub. Link to the repository will be in the description. With that out of the way, let's get into the video. So in the last episode, we covered how to do unit selection, kind of simple unit movement. When they get there, they stop. And in this video, we'll be adding enemies <coughs> and kind of more complicated unit movement. So we'll have we'll have just a standard move that you saw in that other video. Uh, we'll be adding hold and attack move. So when they're just moving, they'll be ignoring enemies, and once they're idle, they'll start attacking them. Right. So I mean they're spazzing a little bit in there. Uh, it's because our movement is not perfect just yet uh, but we'll be working on that so um, you saw the standard move uh, now we hold so only if we're in range of the enemy once they get to us we start attacking so that's hold and attack move is we try to get to whatever spot um, uh, whatever spot we need to um, while killing enemies in the way so though once they see enemies they engage them and they keep going ideally um, for now they kind of stop sometimes uh, before getting there um, but yeah so as you, as you saw there some of the uh, some of the units just stopped because that's how our, our movement code works if, if you don't move closer to the target for for a prolonged period of time you you just kind of stop and forget about the target but these units got there so yeah let's talk about what will allow us to get this functionality in the game and the way we're going to think about this is we're going to think about unit states and we are going to think about unit commands uh, because those are kind of separate. So we have the idle state. We have, um, this is when the unit is just not moving. Um, we have the moving state. Um, this is when a unit is moving towards a point on a map. So this is as opposed to the engaging state. When a unit is moving, moving towards another unit to engage them. We have the attacking state. Uh, this is when a unit is just standing still and uh, doing his attack animation and we have the dying state this is when the unit is playing his dying animation and at the end of the animation uh, they will um, delete themselves <coughs> keep free and in this state we can't transition into any any of these states so that's why this this state needs to be separate and uh, as to unit commands, so we have none. This is when we haven't given any command to the unit. We have the move command. Uh, this is the first command you saw there. Um, this is just when we try to move towards a point on the map and we ignore all of the enemy units. Uh, once we get there, we go, uh, we, we can start engaging, engaging them, but uh, before that, we don't, we don't look at them. And we have attack move, and this is when we are going towards a point on a map. But if we see enemies on the way, we engage and kill them, and then we keep going towards that point on the map. And the last command is hold. This particular command is uh, we just stop. So in our idle state, we generally look for enemies within our view range to engage. But for the hold command, we stay in one spot. And if en enemies come to us, they at uh, we attack them, but we don't move from our position. Oh, so this is generally, this command is generally like useful for blocking units from entering your, your base. So if you have like a wall in on your base, like in StarCraft, for example, you, you have like a You'll have like a zealot in between your uh, in between your buildings to stop like the enemy zerglings from swarming your base or something. But anyways, so we have these we have these states and we have these commands, and the way that we're going to go about uh, implementing this in particular is we're going going to have a state machine, 
A state machine is generally a separate class from our unit um, that keeps track of the state, handles uh, state transitions, so uh, we kind of figure out when we need to switch between states. So if we were in an idle state and we saw an enemy, the state machine would handle the logic for switching from the idle state into the engaging state and then into the attacking state, right? And it handles all of the state logic. Sorry, and this not all state logic. So um, there's kind of a caveat to this. So um, the way that we're going to implement this is it will decide what to do within the state machine. So our if statements match statements, everything for like the decision making will be within the state machine. However, we will have functions within the unit that will be performing basic tasks that the state machine tells it to do. So um, it decides what to do here and uh, calls a function within within the unit um, to do that particular thing, right? So if we, for in a moving state, in this case, within the physics process in the state machine, we'll be calling the state logic function. And this function will call unit move to. Right, because it decided that it's in the it's in the moving state, so therefore we need to call move to inside the unit. And state machines are generally used to implement simple AI. The reason why we're using a state machine is uh, because we want to not use booleans for states. So it will be a lot of booleans. So will be five so far and then we keep going keep going keep going and um, it will be hard to keep track of of what we're supposed to do and the code would be very messy so this is this is mainly an organizational um, thing but you can already see its merits based even on the code that we have here so let's backtrack a little bit and let's do a couple of things not pertaining to state machines. In particular, we want to implement our recoloring for the enemies. So um, our enemies will just be the same, the same unit that we have here. Um, a lot of this code will be moved to the state machine, um, in particular this update sprite function because we can figure out which frames we need to use depending on which state we're in, so uh, we can do that. But first, um, so let's, let's kind of organize this a little bit. Let's say this is the movement code, the frames movement code, which should go inside here. It's just children, I guess. And let's add another one, which is the owner, export variable, unit owner is going to be equal to uh, zero, which stands for just a player. One will be, one will be the enemy. So now, in the game, we'll be able to switch this variable, unit owner, one or zero. And the way that we'll be denoting the enemies is we'll be changing their material. We'll be adding a recolor shader on the material just for the enemies. So this will be, we don't need um, anything on our uh, normal unit because it is added as it is, player unit material. We will be also adding a new shader material, which will have a shader, and we will be recoloring all of this color, the kind of the steel, the steel armor color. So let's write the shader. Shader type, canvas, item. And this will be a fragment shader. So we'll get the current color, texture, texture, UV, and if, the current color equals um, four. So we have our RGB and our alpha, and we're just gonna paste this. So this is, it asks for color in a float up to up to one, basically. 
we are taking the RGB value and dividing it by 255 to get the, the fraction of one that we need, red, blue, green, and alpha. Then we will set the color this. So if, it, if the color is this, I'll switch the color to a different color. And else color equals current color. So we don't want to recolor anything else, right? And the reason why it's not recoloring it is because our animated sprite is not using the parent material. So now that we got that, we will save this material. Enemy units material. And in on ready, if our owner, if unit owner equals one, then we will set the material to materials. Enemy material equals load. We will load this material. If unit owner is enemy, then we set material equals enemy material. We'll clear this and we'll put the player material. So by, by default, it will be a player unit. And then if we are an enemy, so we'll change this to unit owner one and unit owner one. Move these a little farther. Be like a standoff between them. And we should get um, these units. Now, um, the problem is we can select them. So what we'll do, we will make sure that unit collider owner, unit owner equals zero, then we select it. So now we should not be able to select the enemy units and we should be able to select our units. Now that our preparation is done, we can hop on to making a state machine. So a state machine will be our um, base class for all our state machines. We will be using game endeavors um, way of implementing state machines and we'll attach scripts state machine gd so this code this particular code will just be a straight up copy of game endeavors video on the base class for a state machine so the link to that video will be in the description but i'll be walking through the code and writing it here so let's get into it first of all this class will be a state machine and the reason why we're doing this is so that we can just write extends state machine. So it will be will be a part of Godot's like basic nodes, I guess. Um, right. So variable state equals null. Start out in the null state, and while previous state state is also null. So we sometimes want to keep track of the previous state in order to do the transitions right. So if we're, if we're going from a move state into, into an idle state and we didn't reach our target, we want to make sure that um, our move target is now just on the floor right next to us. So we don't, we don't try to keep going towards the target, I guess. So uh, that's why we have a previous state and var states um, is the way he does it is actually a dictionary as you could see some other states machine doing states machines doing it and the reason for that is um, it's just easier to extend the state machine so um, we can just add another state to the dictionary um, if if we have like a state machine so we have a state machine a unit state machine and then a particular like builder state machine it's it's just it's just very easy to add states we need an on ready var parent equals get parent b 
because our state machine will be working very closely with the base unit class. So <laughs> it's just way easier to write parent than get parent. Um, so let's get into the few functions we have in the state machine. So first of all, uh, function add state. We'll add the state, states, state name equals states size. So it will take the state name and put it as the key of our entry. And this will be the value. So if we write add state idle, and then if we ask for states idle, then we get then we get zero. So if that's the first state, then it will be zero. Right? Now on to the physics process. If our state not equals to null, then we want to do state logic. And this is where we decide what to do basically. Okay, which which state are we in? Are we in move? Then we tell the unit to move to the location. Are we in engaging? Then we tell the unit to move towards the, the enemy unit, right? Next we go and say var transition equals get transition. And this function allows us to switch between states. So um, if we're in, in the idle state, for example, we want to look around and see if there are any enemies around. And if so, it will tell us to switch into the engaging state. So it basically tells us get transition basically tells us if we need to switch states or not. And if transition is not null, then we set state transition. Now notice this, um, this function will not be kind of denoted private. Uh, that is because we'll be using this function sometimes. Mostly, mostly it will be used inside inside of the state machine itself. However, sometimes we want to use it within the unit class. Uh, now that we have state logic, we will add function state logic, and here we will pass this function will be implemented within the state machine that is gonna it's gonna use it. Now function get transition. Delta, same thing. Set state is going to be slightly different. There is some logic that we want to implement here. In particular, we want to say previous state, state equals state, and state equals transition. Sorry, this this set free state previous. Say previous here. And now if previous state state is not null, then we exit state previous state new state. And um, we need this because there might be some logic that we might need to do before exit exiting in state. And likewise, we this should be new state. Just makes more sense that way. Uh, new state Just makes makes sense. Transition here, new state here. Uh, so if new state is not null, then we enter state. New state, previous state. And likewise, we might want to do some logic if we're entering a certain state. So let's add these functions. There will be just empty previous state, new state, enter state, state, previous state. And this is our base state machine class. So we'll save that and create another class, which is also going to be a node. And this is going to be our unit state machine. 
and this unit state machine will extend state machine. The reason why we can just write this is because again we have class name state machine over here. Uh, this state machine is gonna take care of all the state transitions logic and the state logic. So since we're doing state transitions in here, we want to do input in here. So we'll be moving our input, which is actually in the game for now, uh, this particular one. Uh, we'll be moving this to here. So um, we'll select the units, but the selected units will handle all of the, uh, the other input themselves. So we'll start out by um, function ready. We'll add all of the states that we want. Add state idle. Add moving, engaging, attacking, dying. You will call deferred set state states idle. Don't ask me why 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 we're doing call deferred here. I don't remember, but the game does break if you don't if you just use set state and the ready function. But we can use just set state state states idle um, outside of the ready function. So that's what we'll do there. Inside of our input event, if parent selected and state is not states dying we don't want to do any logic for dying and if input is action just released right click set parent movement target to event position and we want to set state states moving. Next up is the function state logic delta. If again state is not states dying because we don't want to do any logic if we're dying then we match state and um, we match the state to states idle pass moving engaging attacking and of course I messed up states dying I mean we could match match the states it's kind of extraneous isn't it yeah it is <laughs> it is a little extraneous so let's just match state to states dying and not do anything here as for the other ones in particular, we'll call parent move to target delta and parent movement target. So let's go into our parent, which is not our parent yet because we haven't added state machine. Right? And let's add the move to target function. We can get rid of the physics process in here because we don't don't need it. But for now, we'll do move to target delta and target. And um, here we actually have a target variable, which we'll be changing to movement target. In particular because we want to differentiate between um, uh, movement and engagement so we'll have a movement target and an attack target okay. so we can move all this to here for now and we'll figure out what to keep and what to delete there we can get rid of this because um, this pertains to our uh, state changing logic. So um, when we reach the target, we want to stop, but that changes states. So to keep 
everything clean and tidy, we will have that in the unit state machine. So we'll get rid of this. We'll bring this down. We will actually get rid of the update sprite function because that one is also tidier in the state machine when we're entering states. And it's not targets, it's tar in here. Velocity gets height count. This we can keep. And velocity, we can slide velocity. Now our stopping um, code are actually going to move this within the state machine as well. Because again, it handles a state transition. So now we are going to disconnect this and connect it to the state machine. It's going to be a little uglier, but I think it is worth it. Parent, last position, parent, movement. Uh, we will move this over here. Parent, position, move threshold, parent, movement. But if I don't spell anything, it should work. Pen, I did it twice, didn't I? Oh, I just copy pasted it, that's why. <laughs> okay, uh, parent equals parent position. And we can set state to states idle. Right, we forgot to remove this code. We don't need it anymore. And we are still moving. We're a little janky for some reason, actually. Let us do the animations. And the way we're going to do the animations is through the enter state function. You'll notice here that when we're entering idle, uh, we are switching from walking frames depending on whether they're forward or back frames. And we're gonna do the same thing for the dying animations and the attacking animations. So as opposed to checking for this, we'll actually be adding a new variable that is called var facing forward. So all of this, we can move to the unit state machine as well. So we'll match state. Copy paste this actually. And if we're idle, so let's copy our code from over here for now. Our velocity parent sprite and parent sprite. So this is just our flipping flipping code when we're moving to the to the left, we, we flip it. When we move to the right, we don't flip it. We are actually going to switch to parent movement target Y. Sorry, not Y, X. Our walking frames over here. We'll copy paste this. Oh, that is ugly. Okay. Over here, we don't need this because we'll only be doing this on enter state and parent movement target. Y. Similarly, parent movement target. Y. And this is parent position actually. Position. Parent. Sprite. And parent. We're walking back. We don't need this because we're not constantly switching it. Um, but, however, we need to set this new variable. So we can walking forward frames, parent facing forward plus true, and parent facing forward equals false. Now for idle, we want this ugly thing. We want to reformat this. I don't think we're gonna copy paste this. Um, I'm just gonna get rid of it. If parent facing forward right frames equals idle forward else idle back 
Uh, it's actually inverted. That is also inverted, okay. Interesting. That's because we don't stop when I actually reach the target. So we used to have that code inside our move movement code. And now we don't. So um, state logic. As you can remember, um, we have our state logic and we have our get transition. So we haven't implemented get transition yet. Um, and that's what we need to do to fix that. Function get transition. We will also match state and if moving, if parent distance to parent movement target parent target max we set parent movement target back to position and we set state to states okay. distance to parent position distance to um stop stop okay so we got all of our old logic and now we can start working on the new stuff so let's add the other frames I'll skip this so we got all of the new frames plugged in there are a couple of things that we need to add inside the inside our unit in order to handle um, attacking enemies first we need to spot them and the way we're going to spot them is by adding an area 2D vision range. Um, and we will add a child node uh, collision shape 2D. And this child node will be circle shape 0, 11. And we will increase the size of it. Now, on a vision range, body entered so we want specifically body entered not area entered because we want to track which bodies the other units enter our vision range so since this is a kinematic body physics body uh, we want body entered and now if, if if body is in group unit and if body unit owner not equals to unit owner, then we create an array attacking of our possible targets equals empty array for now. And possible targets append body. So if uh, the body is in group unit and, and the body's unit owner is not our unit owner, then we append it as a possible target. If, so this is, this is when it entered and this is when it exited. If uh, possible targets has body could have been removed through dying before. And then we uh, possible targets erase body. Nice. So this is is us looking at the units that are within our range. We want to do something else. So um, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna sort this array based on our distance to, to the possible targets. And the first um, distance target A target B. The first um, target within the array will be our closest enemy. The way we're gonna do that is we're gonna do custom sort for the array 
and to do a custom sort we need a custom comparison so this is our custom comparison which will compare the distances between these two targets so this function can be used when sorting that array if position distance to target a position then position distance to target b b position then we return true and else we return false it will sort the array in ascending order of distance so the first first item in the array will have will be closest to us and the last item in the array will be um farthest from us now function closest enemy denote it public because we want to use it inside of our unit state machine and it will return a unit so if possible targets size is more than zero and we do something and else we return no this function always needs to return something so um, because we denote it as a unit so we're returning no here uh, we don't have any possible targets so we can't have a closest enemy we possible targets sort custom taking a function from ourselves and the name of the function is compare distance identifier unit is in the valid type not a script or a class because we are going to call this class name unit and that will allow us to do that i believe now it is complaining about the right thing so return possible targets zero so we sorted the array based on distance and we return the closest enemy function target within not target within range um let's think about this so what we want is from this closest enemy we want to see if if the closest enemy is within our attack range uh, within our attack range which should be not over here so we'll add our attack range equals 20 I'll rename this combat um, we'll add var health equals 20 var damage equals 3 and I think that's it for now. So function closest enemy within range. And that should be good. That kind of makes sense. If closest enemy position distance to position is less than attack range return closest enemy else return no uh, we can start implementing refining logic and the way we're gonna do that is first of all if we're idle then if parent closest target not null then we will add a new variable over here which is our attack target no. um parent attack target equals closest and set state states engaging and in the engaging state we can 
parent move to target delta parent let's set target position and the transition for engaging we can f parent closest target within range is not null we can set state to states attacking and actually what we want to do here I want to set this to a weak reference of this because it's attacking oh still set to the parent attack target over here the same thing do we need to it's the same thing yeah we can just keep close this target here um so the reason why we're using a weak reference here is because we might the target might die while we're attacking or while we're moving to it uh, and when when that happens when we reference the target when we reference parent attack target the code will freak out and that's why we will be using weak reference because weak reference will allow us to first of all check if parent attack target target get reference which is can be used as a boolean um, which is true when uh, when the target is still alive when the target is not q freed and false when the reference it's what what it's referencing is null so then we can do parent attack target get reference take damage damage right so we can do that later um so that's why we're using weak reference here and now for the logic move to target engaging attacking no logic i don't believe enter state so enter state this will be copy pasted however it's not movement target it's parent attack target and parent attack target clean this up but for now this is good attacking so enter state logic and sprite frames walking forward frames yeah that's good and states attacking uh, we can do the same logic as idle if parent facing forward then parent attack forward back frames die forward die back see if it freaks out non-existent target non-existent function closest enemy closest enemy like there's always something closest enemy within range they're not not recognizing them um let us see um get transition it's supposed to be transitioning oh that's because our group is not unit that should work i believe let's keep the printing of the state i'm curious invalid get index x parent attack target position position x Oh, index, get index, position, reference, parent attack target, get reference, get, get reference, right, so we're attacking now, now that we have our units looking for other units and attacking them, Let's add a function inside the unit. Why is it not? That allows us to take damage. Function take damage. Damage amount. Uh, health. IC 
equals actually this will return a boolean and it will tell us if we're still alive uh, health minus equals amount amount if health less than or equal to zero return return false take damage among boolean return false um we will add a function inside the unit state machine and we'll actually do an unready var unready var state machine machine ah uh, units SM. turn false state machine uh, died and collision shape I'm ready to collision. I, I, I don't know why I'm doing this. <laughs> Feels right, you know? Shape. Disabled is true. And else return true. Still alive. We will connect the animated sprite animation finished to the unit state machine. On this animation finished, we will be checking if our spread frames, if our state is actually attacking. And if our state is attacking, we will do damage to our um, states attacking. If parent attack target, get reference, we're checking that the target is still alive. And attack, attack, target, get reference, ref, attack, target, reference is taking damage, damage, parent, all this damage amount, damage amount, parent, take damage, if we're still alive, then we do nothing, pass. And else, set state, states idle, and then if for states dying, then we parent q3. And another thing we want to do here, then if, if parent attack target within range then we pass and else set state states engaging all right so if we finished our animation and our attack target is no longer within range then we set state back to engaging is attack target within range how i named it target within range I forgot about this. And else, if if our target is already dead, and set state states idle. I believe that will work. Let's see. Probably not. Probably something will come up. That. Uh huh. No one get index on my base. Yeah. Target. Attack target position distance. Target. Attack target get reference. Mm-hmm. Okay. No. Will you please? Oh no, state machine died. Why is it not freaking out over that? Because state machine died. Function died. Set state. Dying states dying. So why, why did it not freak out? Oh! <laughs> okay, alright. Oof. Oof. Deselect. Base no instance on a no instance. All right, so let's fix that. Um, 
The problem here is that we have our units selected over here. And when we call deselect on a unit that died, it doesn't know what to do. So we'll do another array bar vcref selected equals unit collider select and weak ref selected append weak ref unit unit collider we can do actually unit collider and then instead of selected we'll do weak ref selected for unit and weak ref selected we don't need if unit get ref then we unit get ref deselect. So, so one of our units die, hopefully. And see if it still works. Okay, he died. It doesn't break. Nice. Let's make sure that we stop attacking once our target is dead. So if parent attack target get ref if not this then got set states set states set states states idle and I don't think it matters but for my peace of mind all of that working let's talk a little bit about commands so we have our commands over here, which is non, move, attack, move, and hold. So far, all we're doing right now is just a move command. This one over here. We want to implement attack, move, and hold. So what we're gonna do, we are going to add an enum commands move attack move hold uh, and command equals none right extra little tiny state machine on top of this state machine to keep a track of the commands that we're giving to the unit because they have their own logic which is just all of this uh, but sometimes this logic changes depending on which command we're using. And the way that we're going to give these commands is by clicking A, which is going to be a command modifier for attack move. And we will add modifiers, booleans for. Do we want to. So the way that I did this before, attack move modifier was false. When the player pressed A with selected units, it would change their attack move modifier to true. And when he gave them command, uh, like a right click command, it would do attack move for command as opposed to move. So um, on this, it would set the command that we're giving. So this is just move. And when the modifier is true, we set attack move instead. However, now that I'm thinking about this, we're not deselecting this modifier when we give this a different modifier. So if the player pressed A to attack move modifier, and then he pressed P for like patrol move modifier, we're not switching, switching this modifier. So I think we're going to do another enum for command modifier. And we are gonna give it none, uh, attack move, none, and attack move. The reason why we're not doing hold, uh, modifier, or command, mod, is because it's just a command. It's not a, when you press H, you give, you give the unit a command straight up. You don't need to, you don't need to, um, press anywhere for it to hold. Add action, attack, move, hold, H. 
and not states dying if input input is action first attack move command mod none and command mod is equals to command mod attack move input is action first hold hold right and if action press just released match command mod none then we do this command equals commands move and command equals commands attack move we don't need this over here so we'll just move this over here now this changes our logic a little bit so we need to switch our state transitions if command not equal to commands hold then we do this else we if parent what's the name target within closest enemy within range parent closest enemy within range not equal to null then we parent attack target equals repref parent closest enemy within range right so we're if we're holding and we're idle kind of redundant but we don't want to um, select a target and engage it we only want to attack targets within range and that set state states attacking instead of engaging so this should get hold working let's check that out hold up hold up if closest enemy closest enemy then we do that and also turn no I mean enter state idle once we hold so hold enter state set state idle here hold so they're holding hold they're right, only attacking on when they're within range and that range is kind of huge, so I'm going to bring it back to 25. Um, so hold is working. And now attack move. The difference between attack move and move is that we engage target in our way and we keep moving. So um, the problem here would be uh, we see a target, we start engaging it. Uh, here, first of all, we need to start engaging target. If uh, command move and we do this command equals command attack move then we do this like we're an idle once we kill the target we will uh, go back to idle so but from the state idle we want to transition back into moving if our Command is attack move. In idle, we will match command here. Hold. And we do this. Attack move. Then we go into set state. Moving, so we go back into moving towards the target. Else, so what I want to do here is do commands non none and do this so we look for a target and our command is none however um, we don't actually switch um, from so we could we could have commands moving in here 
right? We never actually switch to commands none. So we want to switch to commands none once we've finished moving. And get transition, commands moving, f parent position distance to parent movement target target max, then command none. See if it works. Attack move. We should keep moving and then keep moving after that. Good. We will uh, do a little like go here thing <laughs> when we quick. I'll show you. Uh, one second. Change type uh, animated sprite. Move animation. And this thing is gonna have its own scene because it's that important. And the frames for it are over here. And this little thing is very important because it's fun to press and have it play. Um, so whoop will be off and playing will be on. And it's like the sole reason for like a hundred APM increase of like any player out there. Just because they like clicking. Anyways, um, let's put this down over here. Maybe not above units. When we are pressing right click, if event is input, event mouse button, and event button index equals button, button right. Not mouse right. Why is button right? What is mouse right? Um, then we set move move animation position equals event position and move animation frame equals zero. Yay! Ooh. All right, here we'll just if um, parent attack target get ref, then we do this. So I think it freaked out once these ran out of targets, right? So it didn't freak out now. But the states are all kind of messed up over here. Set state states idle. What if we move these instead of we are actually not doing this, so we need to repeat that. And I guess we don't need to do this. We just do this in every case. We are not engaging them when we are idle. Here on stop timer timeout, we need to do command none as well. Falsest enemy is not null, and we are engaging here. Falsest enemy is not null. Falsest enemy. Why are they just sweating him? Attack them. For some reason, some point set state dying. So it set the state dying, but it allowed it to switch from dying. This is why. If parent state not state dying, this is where it is messing up, I believe. So now we shouldn't be getting that bog over there. Um, all right, I think we're good. I think we did everything that we set out to do in this video. I'm curious about monitors. How much of a hit we have in the physics process for all this stuff going on. It's a decent amount. Not too much though. That's fine. Yep, 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 yep. 
and this concludes our video uh, in the next video we'll be implementing better pathfinding probably full field pathfinding but i'll have to look more into it because this is this jittering is not okay they need to figure out where to go uh, we'll be adding camera movement possibly um, but also we'll be adding uh, another unit a ranged unit an archer and fixing whatever problems arise in our um, unit state machine from that but um, thank you for watching if you enjoyed it and would like to see more subscribe and i'll see you next time